I gave you all I had. I did. Uh. Uh. Come on. Dutch. Let's go, buddy. We made it. We won. Come on. John made it. Death is a common sight in the Red Dead Redemption games. Whether we're talking to the hundreds of men put down at the hands of both games' protagonists, Arthur Morgan and John Marston, or the hundreds of men killed by rival gangs, civilians caught in the crossfire or simply trying to get one over on these outlaws, exchanges in these games usually come at the payment of one's life. And while most of these deaths and tragedies suffered aren't directly felt by the player or people close to the player, that doesn't mean we don't ever witness it. As a matter of fact, the deaths of Osea, Sean, and even Angelo Bronte are ones that are almost always called upon when we think of lives lost in Red Dead Redemption 2. With the latter being more of a unique case since unlike the previous two mentioned, Bronte is not a member of the Vanderlyn gang, or even on the same side as we are. Nonetheless, today I wanted to go over some deaths in both Red Dead Redemption games that are, for the most part, forgotten or overshadowed by the circumstances surrounding their deaths, giving us inadequate time to process or even, in some cases, grieve the loss of these characters. I do want to make it clear that this isn't something that's set in stone. This is yet another one of those instances where it's just a matter of perspective, so I want to hear from you if there's any deaths you want to see on maybe a part two, or how you even feel about my picks. But I want to kick this off with the death of Lenny Summers. Hey, I always enjoy riding with you, kid. <laughs> Lenny's death is quick and to the point. It happens in the middle of San Denis Bank robbery and because the gang is surrounded by law from all sides in the heart of the city, the time for mourning has to be saved for later. The threat of being captured or killed is all too real for anyone who has ever rode with Dutch Vanderlyn, so the focus is more on self-preservation than giving a proper goodbye. His death is also a minute or so after everyone witnessed the public killing of Jose on the open streets of San Denis. And those who then managed to escape from the San Denis bank robbery found themselves stranded on the island of Guarma, forced to engage in a revolutionary war with the locals if they ever had even the smallest amount of hope to return back to their lives before being stranded at sea. In the grand scheme of things, Lenny's death is an event that is easily forgotten about, with it being placed between the death of a character that is more vital to the main protagonist and the gang's overall well-being, and then immediately followed by a roller coaster of events that doesn't even give Arthur enough time to reflect. Which is sad to say the least because Lenny's death clearly affected Arthur. Arthur's painful shriek at the realization of Lenny getting shot is unmistakable. We can get across He's, he's dead! Oh, God, no! And if we take a step back and reevaluate their relationship, Lenny was killed at a time where Arthur was beginning to trust him more and more. How far that trust and how beautiful of a relationship it would have blossomed between the two of them is only open to speculation, but Lenny's death is a tragedy that I feel can easily be forgotten about. Arthur. You going fishing? Yes. We're running off to Como Driscoll. Of course not. <laughs> I was joking. Kieran Duffy. I mentioned before Kieran's death was one that I always remembered because of its brutality and shock factor. Not because of who Kieran was as a character. Kieran for me was someone who I always had to actively try to remember. He was someone who lived a very sad life caught in between the Driscolls and the Vanderlyn gang, never being fully accepted by either. And he was always left in the background. Kieran was picked up by Dutch and the rest of his men in the early hours of the chapter of culture at the beginning of Red Dead Redemption 2. Immediately after being captured, Kieran was tortured, tied to a tree, and constantly threatened and humiliated by the rest of the Vanderlyn gang. Even after saving Arthur's life at Six Point Cabin, Kieran still found himself being referred to as nothing more than an Adriscoll who wasn't worthy of life. As I just said, for the most part, Kieran basically fades into the background after Six Point Cabin, with his most notable appearances being bullied around camp or fishing with Arthur. But no matter how hard he tried to convince anyone and everyone around him, he would never become a fully-fledged Vanderlint member. Regardless of the allegiance he's shown by saving Arthur's life and bringing Dutch's men straight to Colm's doorstep. Without a shadow of a doubt, Kieran in this entire list was killed in the most brutal way as well, with the biggest shock factor. Kieran was captured by some Madriscals. It's believed he was tortured before his death to reveal the location of where the Vanderlyn gang was hiding out at, which at this point in time was Shady Bell. He was then killed with his eyes gouged out, his head decapitated, 
and then his buddy presented on horseback sent back to the Vanderlyn gang as a nice little present. The death itself is incredibly memorable. Kieran, however, is not. I also believe Kieran's death is another catalyst because right after Kieran's death is the mission Urban Pleasures where Angela Bronte basically portrays Dutch and the rest of the Shady Belt chapters just dedicated to setting up the revenge mission on Angela Bronte and preparing for the bank robbery of Saint-Denis. Careful not to work yourself to death there, uncle. I was thinking. Yeah, does it pay well? Oh, eventually. So, while the rest of us are busy stealing, killing, lying, fighting to try to survive, you get to think all day. Uncle. I actually completely forgot Uncle even died. And it's a pretty sad death too. Uncle, as everyone who played Red Dead Redemption 2 knows, is notoriously lazy. He's affectionately referred to as the camp rat by Arthur and even a parasite. In the epilogue, John makes sure Uncle helps around the ranch if he's even to be allowed to think of it as his home, let alone actually live there. Honestly, just by playing the game, it doesn't take much time or hard digging by anyone to realize what Uncle's position is within the gang or how little respect he commands from everyone else. He's often seen lounging around the camp refusing to pull his own weight even in the mission, an honest mistake where he lines up a robbery, he's pretty reluctant to even go along with the rest of the gang members. Well, I got a serious medical condition. <laughs> yes, you are a compulsive liar. No need to be like that. Charles, have I ever lied to you? I hardly know you. Exactly. But Uncle dies at the very end of the original Red Dead Redemption. He catches a bullet to the gut, defending his home his brother-in-arms John, and John's family from the United States military. Now this original game isn't as fleshed out in terms of really pulling on people's emotions and trying to make them feel for other characters, so in a way, it's kind of dry how even Abigail responds. Which we'll just chalk it up to, you know, the game being 2009 and the series not really being that fleshed out for being realistic or trying to have that emotional connection to characters. But it just goes to show that ultimately, in the end, there was still some loyalty. There was still some dedication by Uncle. He was all too willing to put his life on the line and defend it all here. And it's easy to forget about his death because just moments later, John dies in front of the barn. And when the game ends, we see Jack standing at the grave of Abigail and John and of course even uncle's buried in the same location but it's kind of off to the side and it's not like Rockstar tries to push his death off to the side it's just completely overshadowed by how John is gunned down and then there's the feeling of Jack and whether if he was able to make it out of the life that his dad so desperately tried to ensure he wouldn't fall into and the sadness of knowing that even Abigail dies, which I believe people chalk it up to heartbreak, I don't even know. But I think Uncle's death is one of the most overlooked and overshadowed. Playing the original game by itself, it's obviously not that big. But going from the prequel to the sequel, it just it just made me feel so much more for Uncle, as a prequel does for so many other characters. Call me Molly, would you? Oh. Arthur, how is Dutch? I mean, how does he seem to you? I'm about the same as usual, I guess. I... I really love him, you know. But if he... Like he always says, loyalty is everything, so... Molly O'Shea. See, with Uncle, I at least had a vague recollection of what happened. Just not so much. Just needed a reminder was all. Molly, on the other hand, I always forget, is even around. I don't even know if she deserved to be in the game at all. The most I ever hear or see of her was her possibly giving the gang up to the Pinkertons, which she claims she did herself in a drunken rage, upset at the fact Dutch was neglectful of her and her womanly needs. But for Molly, I think her death, for me, plays a very similar role to Kieran. Although with Kieran, it's how he was killed. With Molly, it's more so Dutch's reaction. Seeing Dutch this blatantly pissed off and Arthur coming to his side, basically telling him to calm down, relax, she's not worth it. Having to be that logic, that reason in his ear. When you could tell, all he sees is red. I told them! I'm sorry? Yeah, I told them and I tell them again. Now I've got God's ear. You told who? What? Mr. Milton and Mr. Ross about the bank robbery, and I wanted them to kill you. You did what? I loved you, you goddamn bastard! Go on, shoot me! Crazy. She ain't worth it. According to Milton, this wasn't true. 
Molly never said a word. Regardless, she's quickly dispatched by none other than Miss Grimshaw, someone who not only is in the number one spot on this list, but had to have been tired of Molly doing nothing other than being attached at Dutch's hip. While Miss Grimshaw may be a loyal member dedicated to the rules of having the gang's back, something Molly apparently blatantly disobeys, it's hard to think Miss Grimshaw wasn't taking this opportunity that she's been waiting for for such a long time to finally get rid of Molly, who she may have seen as getting a free ride within the gang. Something we can tell she can't stand. You know, Liv, I've killed girls as betrayed us and done it happily. Is reading betrayal in your world, Miss Grimshaw? Not reading, Miss. Idleness. Idleness is betrayal because it means I work so you don't have to. That's not right, is it? I guess not, Miss. You're right not, Missy! On! Miss Grimshaw. Similar to Molly and Kieran, Miss Grimshaw takes more of a back seat when it comes to the main events of the game. However, when it comes to the camp and how everything is running, we can all owe it up to her. Miss Grimshaw is often seen walking around camp, even intimidating and threatening those who she believes are being lazy and getting a free ride with the gang. She can be ruthless too. As early as Horseshoe Overlook, you can find Miss Grimshaw threatening Mary Beth to get back to work or even calling Abigail lazy and telling her to go back to selling her body to help make sure she's doing her part for the gang. While her methods may be questionable and her perspective may be a bit harsh, we cannot deny her loyalty or willingness to ensure the gang's survival. Unfortunately for her, her undying loyalty ended up costing her life. Unlike other members of the Vanderlyn gang who decided to leave after seeing the writing on the wall, acknowledging the gang's dangerous position and Dutch's inability to salvage the situation and ensure everyone made it to the Virgin Lands of Tahiti that he promised. She stood, standing her ground with Arthur who revealed to Dutch and everyone else around them that Micah has been a rat this entire time. It's under this revelation that Micah quickly kills Miss Grimshaw. Be quiet, Mr. Bell, and put down your gun. There's Pinkerton's coming, fast! And with Miss Grimshaw considered to be one of the original members of the Vanderlyn gang up there next to Hosea, Dutch, and Arthur, her death and Dutch's unflinching decision to, in the moment, still give Micah a fair shot symbolically finishes off the original core of the Vanderlyn gang. Even though she didn't hold a major position in the narrative, I don't think we can overemphasize her importance as setting up each and every camp, making sure it ran smooth and efficiently. I think her and Pearson were basically the backbone of the camp, and her death is only another reason to hate Micah who at this point already had the blame of everything that has went wrong with the gang's fortune up until now, plus all of us being so preoccupied with what happens to Arthur and John and how Dutch at least finishes off the last time he ever sees Arthur, narratively speaking, and even, I would say, emotionally. We don't really have that much of a tie to her, we don't have that much cutscenes or missions to really pull from, but even then, her importance to the gang and even to Arthur and Dutch, I think makes her death incredibly vital, something that we should pay a little bit more attention to. But that's just what I was thinking. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. And hey, if you want a part two, or if there's anything else you want to add to these five, please share it down below. And I'm always taking video ideas, video suggestions, and whatnot, so please don't hesitate. But like always, my name is Cynic. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.